what's going on simplifiers welcome back to dennis simplifies in today's video we are going to go through the lagrange interpolation in numerical methods so sit back relax and as you already know let's simplify so what is this whole Lagrangian interpolation about? Alright, so if you can see from the table we have over here, we have some x values and we have some f of x values or some y values, okay? Now this whole Lagrangian interpolation is about that. When you have an x value or you have x values and you have f of x values, what we want to do is that you can see that the interval between the x values are not equal right if they were equal you will know that they are corresponding values of f of x so let's say if today i buy you two oranges and the following day i buy you two oranges and i keep buying you two oranges every day you can tell the number of oranges i will buy you by the fifth day or by the sixth day you can tell because you know i keep buying you two oranges every day but you can see over here that if we have just one orange here let's say on the first day i buy you no oranges on the fourth day i buy you 63 oranges on the seventh day i buy you 342 oranges now if i ask you how many oranges will i buy you on the sixth day you know you can't actually tell so what we're actually doing here is that with the lagrange interpolation is that we want to create a formula right so we have to create a formula that if I give you the number the, the day, you can tell me the number of oranges I'm going to buy you. So with the Lagrange, we are saying that if x is at 5, what is going to be its corresponding f of x? Now to find the corresponding f of x, we have to create a formula. So when we make a formula like this, let's say 8x squared minus 6x plus 1. With this formula, whenever you give me any day, I can tell you the number of oranges you are going to buy me, right? So we are using the Lagrange because the interval between the x values are not equal, right? They are not equal. That is why we have to generate first, we have to generate a formula. And then once we have this formula, any day you give me, any x value that you give me, I can tell you its corresponding f of x value, all right? Sure. So to go by this, we have a formula that we use to to generate this formula I'm talking about. So the Lagrange interpolation has its own formula that will help you to get the formula for your work, okay? So this is how the formula looks like. In ge in general, generally, the three here is not, it's actually in. Now I'll come back to why we have three over here, okay? All right, so if you can see down here, most of the time you may not be given a table like this for you to compute for the to interpolate at a particular x value right you may be given something like what you see down here now what i will encourage you to do is that always try to draw out your table okay it helps for you to actually visualize the work that you are doing so from the from the formula that you see down here the question you have down here you can know that the x values are going to be zero one and then three okay and then the y values are going to be one three and then 55 so always try to draw out your table the x values are again zero one and then three and then the y values or the f of x values are going to be one three and then 55 so if you are able try to draw out your table all right so now let's go back to this table we are going to have our x not value our x1 value x2 value x3 value then f not is value here f1 f2 and then f3 now you can know why i have it over here because the last node we have here is x3 meaning we are going to be ending at 3 okay so it's pn of x so because our last node or our last x value is 3 we are doing p3 of x all right so now let's go back to this formula to the, on this formula you can see that we have certain variables inside here we have f naught so from the table we can know the value of f naught which is negative 2 we have f1 here to be 0 we have f2 to be 63 and then f3 to be 342 okay so now the next thing we have to do is to find this l naught of x l1 of x l2 of x and then l3 of x Again, the Lagrange interpolation has its own way of finding these values. So let's look at let's take, let's take a look at them. So with L not of x, we are going to be doing some subtraction and multiplication, then some division over here. So with the x value that we are looking for, 
I told you that we are looking for a formula, we want to generate a formula, so don't put the 5 inside this formula, just use the x that we have here. We know the value for x1, we know the value for x2, we know the value for x3, right, from the table. We put them inside here and then we generate our L0 of x. This is going to be our L0 of x if you do the computation. Again, when we look at our L1 of x, we have this formula, don't try to memorize it, you will find it in books and then if it's, if it's an exam, you are probably going to be given the formula. So over here to the same thing, you put in your values for x0, x2 and then x3, and then the denominator you do the same thing here, you're going to have your L1 of x. Alright, the second thing again, you to put in your values for x0, x1, x3, and you do it again. And the last one is for L3 of x. Again, you do the same thing, you generate your formula. Alright, now, looking at this, you can see something that for the L0 of x, there was no x0 value on top here. Yeah, let's see the pattern. You can see that down here we have the x0 doing the subtraction over here. x0 here, x0 here, x0 here. So x0 minus x1 minus x2 minus x3. Then again for the L1, you can see we have no x1 value in the numerator. But we have the x1 doing the, doing the subtraction down here at the denominator. The same thing for the L2. You can see that there is no x2 value in the numerator. But we have the x2 value doing the subtraction in the denominator. Again, the same thing for the L3. We don't have any x3 value in the numerator, but we have the x3 values in the denominator. Right? So you do this right if you are your arithmetic are on point, you're supposed to get these values here. So I will just encourage you, please don't expand this. Leave it as it is. Don't expand it. It helps make your works faster. So now that we have our L not x, we get back to the main Lagrangian interpolation formula, which is this one here. You are going to do some multiplication and some additions to generate our final formula. So let's move to the next page. Over here, we had this formula here. So the first thing we are going to do is find it to put in the values. Okay. So we have for f naught, we know the value for f naught to be negative two, and then we knew that here was negative eighty. So they cancel out, and then we get for this part. And then for the L1 and L2, we know the value for F1. We put that also inside here. F1 was I think 0. So it's going to nullify everything over here. That's why you have, so you can see plus 0 here. It nullifies everything here. You move to the L2 to the same thing. We know the value for F2 to be 63. So you put that in here, you can see 63 on top here. Alright, and then again, we know the value for F3. So you put F3 here, which is 342 over the 144. And then we have it in here. So please. Do not expand this, okay? Don't expand it. We can just go straight and then factorize this x3 out. We have x cube here, x cube here, x cube there. Alright? So we can take the coefficient, which is 2 on 80. Then here, the coefficient will be negative 63 on 45. Then the coefficient here to be 342 on 144. Then we put the x3 behind it. Alright? Then next, we come to the x squared so the coefficient of the x squared is going to be 2 over 2 over 80 times negative 12 right plus plus negative 63 on 45 times negative 7 plus 342 over 144 times negative 4 right that will be 4 that will be the coefficient of x squared then we move to x the coefficient of x2 will be 2 on 80 times 39 plus negative 63 on 45 times negative 1 then plus 342 on 144 times negative 1 right that will be the coefficient for x then lastly we take the coefficient of the constant which is going to be 2 on 80 times negative 28 plus negative 63 on 45 times 7 then plus 3 on 4 2 3 4 2 over 1 4 4 times 4 All right to get our constant and then we summarize it down here so that's exactly what you can see here we are just finding for the coefficients right you do that and then you can find your formula so when you kind of solve everything here you are going to get your formula to be x cubed minus 1 now from the question, you're supposed to find what the value of x will be at a particular value of f of x, okay? So when we put in the value of x, which was 5 from the question, 
you're supposed to get one two four right that means that on the fifth day i'm going to buy you 124 oranges right isn't that great so with the lagrange we are supposed to find a formula okay find a formula that whenever we put in a particular x value you're going to get its corresponding f of x value so to make sure that our, our formula is actually right we can pick any x value from the table okay and then put that x value inside the formula that we've generated to, to make sure that it is actually correct so if i put a negative one from the table here i'm going to get negative one cube minus one right which is negative two right again we can pick another one another x value which is one if i put one here it's going to be one q minus one and i'm going to get zero you can see zero is on the table if i pick four i'm going to get four q minus one which is going to be 63 right so you can see that our formula actually works so whenever we put in any x value it's going to generate us the corresponding f of x value so that is all about the lagrange generate your formula using the lagrange formula and then you just go about it get your formula and then put in your x, of x values for your f of x values all right friends so that's it for the language interpolation in numerical methods see you in the next video show some love by hitting the like and subscribe button until next time ah, ah, yeah.